Okay guys, I'm here today for Murilo Santana, huge honor for me at Unit Jiu Jitsu, one of the nicest Jiu Jitsu schools here in New York City. I was just training here, there was like almost 80 people on the mat, it was really, really impressive. And guys, Murilo is, uh, just shot his very first instructional, his first time that he showed up in front of the camera ever, and it's about pressure passing. And I think everybody wants to learn your pressure passing, Will. So, Will, I'm gonna ask you a few questions here that I always want to ask okay. you. So let's do this in front of okay. the camera. Oops. So every time I see you competing, and I also when I watch you training, and I heard that from a lot of people, anytime someone pulls your guard, you don't give them anything. Uh -huh. You break down, uh -huh. you shut down their whole game yeah. in the very first second. So what's the secret? So I, I think. That type of stuff, I, I try to teach a little bit. I like to do it. I think it's very important to start the guard pass before the guy is playing guard, right? So if we slap him up, like I talk about in the DVD, the guard pass start already. So yeah. by, by the way you're standing, you're already doing your guard pass. If I stand like this, it's one type of guard pass. If I stand like that, another type. If I'm off to the side, one type here, here one time. You always guard passing already. And one of the things that you want to do early is to not let the guy even get his control on you. But you don't have to always bust every grip or, you know, break everything. You can just make the guy miss, right? So for example, in the, in the DVD we talked, Mike asked this also, if you bury the guy's control a little bit, you're going to create an opening. But if you continue to initiate and continue to drive, you're not gonna let him do anything. So for example, let's say, let's say maybe your half guard pull is very good, it's very difficult to stop. So do like a different, maybe do four of the end. Okay, okay. okay. Can you even get a little closer yeah. just so we get yeah. a little better angle here? So, so let's say the guy gonna do foot on the hip, right? I know that the foot gonna travel this path and it wants to come here. I don't really need to do a lot. I just need to make him this. So sometimes, just with the foot on the hip, just this is enough. I pop at the porch. Right? Okay. Now, sometimes, just that little miss gonna make the guy miss enough that's gonna open a big gap and you can take that gap because you're gonna put pressure, okay? Other times, he doesn't miss that big, but he miss a little bit and this gonna mess him up enough, now I'm ahead, right? And there's a path here. Now he's gonna try to recover his controls and reset. And we're gonna look to take the gap that's gonna open up as he's trying to reset and recover. And we're gonna try to never let him recover. Because we're always gonna try to be covering the distance, putting pressure on the guy. I talk a little bit on the, on the DVD. It's, I think it's very important. Sometimes people think that you can put a lot of pressure on the guy by squeezing the guy, by putting a lot of power. And I explained in the DVD that the real pressure comes from where you're traveling to, from where you're driving to. So if I'm here and I can put all of the squeeze I want here, there's not that much pressure. The pressure that you're gonna feel is me trying to move somewhere else. And so I always have to be Traveling, traveling from one side to the other side. Oh, really? Right. When you were just doing this, I noticed how you were always climbing up. Yeah, yeah. So, in the same time that you were moving kind of like side to side, you were also climbing up towards yeah, your point. Trying try to go because the goal here from the pass, I want to attack the shoulder line, get to the mouth, to the back, right? So, even though first I have to focus the energy here a little bit. I still want to drive across and drive up, right? right? And that's when you're going to feel the most pressure, right? If I just, if I just drive here, it's pressure, but the real pressure is when I try to move you and try to, to drive up the body or drive to the side and things like this, right? And also, when you're moving forward, as the guy tries to reset, you're taking up the gaps, right? Yep. You're not going backwards and letting him really reset. Because sometimes maybe if I'm here, I made you miss, and then you reset to a guard, and now I'm here like this. But if I'm moving, you go to reset. I got it. Man, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, because I'm traveling towards something. And so all the resets, I'm gonna take the gap early. 
and not give you the time to really put the guard on me the way you like. Okay, so Murilo, uh, so I think like everybody who watches foreign structural abuse, one of the main things that they want to learn is the concept. Uh -huh. So I, I just learned like very two very cool concepts over here. So regarding the guard passing, right, the, right when the match starts, you're, you're already, already passing. About, you're already you're passing already the guard. Passing, yeah. Man, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have to be careful because if, if you zero in too much on just passing, you have to you remember the takedown. Take yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. okay, you have to pay attention to the takedown. But the thing is, the biggest, one of the big mistakes in the beginning is you wait until the guy puts you in the guard. Okay, now you start passing yeah. the guard. Now you're Never like this. Guard. Never yeah. like this, right? You always block his entry, block his control. And every time he miss, just like I told Mike, like in boxing, anything, if he miss, you're going to leave himself open. You're going to be yeah. some type of opening. And if you try to travel, if you're putting pressure, if you're driving forward, when he opens that, you're gonna go through. Then you're gonna try, you're gonna try, you're gonna try. You keep driving, there's gonna be another gap. Yeah. You switch to the other gap. And this way you stay ahead of the guy. Yeah, no? man, that's incredible. Well, we, for example, we, we're talking about starting the match standing. Yeah. But most of the times in the training, we start the match on the knees. Yeah. So it's the same mindset? It's the same, it's even easier on the knees. Because it's, it's a little bit less momentum, a little bit less space. And there's no takedowns either. There's no takedowns to worry about. Uh, you know, I recommend for people that have the space and, and that are able to, to start from the standing position a little bit because it gives you a better feel, it's, it's you know, more explosive and stuff like that. But if you start from the knees, it's the same. If I go and I come here and I let Bernardo pull, Bernardo pull, okay, now I start to do my pass. This is one thing, yeah. But if I come here and I'm here, Man, that's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. So, you're kind of waiting for me to do something, and as soon as I do it, you have the reaction so like right away. So, a couple different ways that you can do that. You can be very reactive and just wait for the guy, and when you shoot his guard, you make him miss and you put pressure on him. Or, you can start putting pressure on him, putting pressure on him, and try to make him shoot the guard out of position. So yeah. then instead of me being here, I would be here, here, oh, yeah. here, I got, here. Yeah, and, I, right? and I'm going to pull very uncomfortable. And you're going to pull uncomfortable, which is very important standing. Uh, me, I don't do that that much standing up, but I recommend that you mix your preparation for the guard pass with your takedowns. And then you can do both. Okay. Muriel, another question. So I'm the fanboy here, so I have a ton of questions. So. But uh, uh, I heard that, for example, sometimes when you train someone that you know that's really good on this grip, uh -huh. you hide the arm without uh -huh. even realizing that you did hide the arm. Sometimes. So what's, what, you, you do that? Uh, but this how, is, how that works like? But this is because I have a lot of injuries, like a surgery, surgery, so I spend a lot of time training with just one arm. Okay. So I'm uh, more comfortable than most people with just one arm. Yep. You know what I mean? So sometimes if the guy really like this grip, I go one arm and we go from here. Yeah, and you know, I'll, yeah. be, I'll be careful he doesn't get a triangle and I'll yeah. just use my head position and then when yeah, you then pull. Yeah, then I need to pull far. <laughs> nah, that's too easy. Oh, I love it. Well, that's more because, because of injuries and stuff, I'm very like used to doing one arm and stuff like this, you know. Got it. Yeah. No, that's incredible. But also like, if the guy really like this grip, for sure, don't let him separate it from your body and things like this, right? The more the guy open you up, the more paths you're gonna have to put the control on you. Yeah. you know? So sometimes, uh, sometimes I do this too much, sometimes I close up too much. That's not that good because then you're too stiff. Yeah. But you definitely wanna always know where the guy wanna put his foot, where the guy wanna get the controls and block that path a little bit, you know, okay. always. Oh, that's okay. Muyo, uh, a lot of our customers are like older, they're like yeah. over 30, over 35, over 40. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of like my style as well, pressure pass. But every time I see you rolling or competing, for example, I always think like, man, that's something that everybody can do. It's yeah, not like the sure. crazy for the sure, yeah. card wheel, blah, blah, blah. I think blah, the so. stuff, uh, th these things we're talking about right now, right? You basically, you're anticipating, okay? You're setting yourself up in a good position. You're opening the gaps not by doing something really crazy where you need to do a cartwheel or something like this, which is good, there's nothing wrong with cool. cartwheels, is nice too, but this type of stuff does not take a lot of athleticism to do. Because basically, 
you're gonna anticipate what's gonna happen. So I don't need to be faster than you. I just need to get there before you, yeah. right? So you do, do any pull. I got it. So I did not need to be fast. I, I barely moved. It's just you how you position But yourself. I was there before, you understand? So I'm gonna get there before your frames, not because I'm strong, but just because I set it up. And when you pull, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to do guard. Yeah, it's so, hard to do guard if the guy does this. And I don't have to be fast, don't have to be explosive, don't have to, to do nothing. Athletic. No, yeah, man, that's incredible. just have to pay attention. No, that's yeah. amazing. So I think it's good for everybody. I yeah. think for no, sure I it's good for everybody. Believe. And uh, yeah, so guys, uh, this is the very first time ever that Murilo does any video. We are super honored yeah. that you I appreciate it, video. I appreciate Bernardo and Michael. It's the uh, first time in my life doing an instructional. It's a special thing, it's, it was like a, like a, like New Year's resolution that I did after the pandemic, I'm gonna make at least one DVD and stuff like this because oh, I always, I always hate it, hate it, hate it, but I decided to do one, so I'm happy I did it with you guys. I appreciate you, oh. I appreciate everybody. Yeah. Thanks so much, Murilo. Thank you, brother. Yeah. And guys, uh, uh, that uh, very soon we're gonna launch a pressure passing by Murilo Santana. It's gonna be at vjjfanatics.com, and maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. Thank you, Murilo. Oh, oh, thank you. Man. Thank you, guys. Obrigado. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel, just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.